Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at Squadron Strike and shooting a bearing and mapping to weapon arcs. Now, uh, when I originally sat down to do a weapons tutorial for Squadron Strike, I tried to kind of put everything into one movie and it, it did not work well. It was just uh, too much information and I kind of got caught up in different places and things like that and it just was not worth it. So um, what I'm going to be doing today is basically showing you how to calculate range and also how to calculate where exactly something is in the sky when you go to take a shot. So let's go ahead and begin with the basics. So when you're going to take a shot, you need to know how far away the target is, and you also need to know where the target is relative to your weapons in order to predict what firing arc that you're going to be using for a given attack. Now the way that this works is pretty straightforward. Basically you calculate the horizontal distance, calculate the vertical distance, and then you map that to an arc based on where your nose is. It's not too too complicated, but there could be some kind of funky shapes, especially when you start rotating and flipping ships and stuff like that. So anyway, let's go ahead and begin. So we want to go ahead and take a shot at this guy. He's kind of a long distance away at this particular time. So probably not going to have any weapons that we can normally fire unless we have like a battleship or something like that. But at the same token is we can still work it out. So where is he in the sky relative to us? Well, first thing we've got is a little bit of a problem. We're at an altitude of minus 10. He's at an altitude of positive 10. How do we know? Whenever you have a black mark, you always have to pretend as if your spacecraft is actually below our main reference plane. And each one of these blue represents a distance of 5. Now if we scoot to this side of the table, we can see the fact that he's got two of these fives as well, but he's above us. So that's going to make things a little bit different, but not too, too complicated. So anyway, to do the range, we're going to go ahead and count out horizontally. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 horizontal. And we know that it's a 20 distance vertical. So we're going to come over to this little chart real quickly. We're going to measure over 18, and then we're going to go up to 20. And that's going to put it right here, 26 distance away in the green arc. So we're simply going to pop over here real quickly. We're going to go ahead and leave ourselves a note that he's 26 away. Keep in mind that's a positive 26. We're negative, he's positive. He's up here like this, as um, you'll see in just a minute, that's going to matter quite a bit. Now the cool thing is, if I take all the work to calculate where he is in the sky, he doesn't have to do it, because he knows if he comes over here, he's a minus 26 away to me. So now that we know where he is in the sky, by the way, you want to do this step after you've moved, otherwise it gets a little redundant. Some games you actually need to do it twice, like Birds of Prey, but that is for another episode. So anyway, we'll go ahead and take a look at the situation now. So where is this firing arc? Okay, so let's go ahead and pop down to my little thing right here and see if we can figure this out. So the first thing we know is our target is above us, which means it has to be somewhere up here. Second thing we know is we can see that he's one down from the top of our ship, and we can see that he's two up from the nose of our ship. So if we take a look real quickly, we can use either one of them, and they're completely valid. Going one down, this is going to give us a little bit of ambiguity. We don't know which one it is. Going up from the nose to, however, it follows a very logical path, which is going to put him right there. He's got a similar situation. He knows that it is below us. Remember, it's below us. And now we're at minus 26 here in the green arc. So in this particular case, it's the same thing, but in reverse. This is just an interesting little coincidence. So when we calculate where he is, let's go ahead and get rid of that ambiguous mark there. We know that it's going to be two below the nose. So it means it's going to be right there. So what does that mean for our actual attacks? Well, now that we know where he is in the sky, we can take a look at our actual diagrams here and figure out what to do. These diagrams are simply looking through the ship from the back. So this is the nose, this is the port side, this is the starboard side, this is our aft. So we've already calculated it, so we know that he is located right here. And we can check it. We're obviously in arc right here. Checking this arc here, we're not going to be an arc that's going to be out of our way. Checking this arc here, we are going to be an arc, so we can't engage him with that weapon. Flipping over to this uh, particular spacecraft here, he's got a very, very similar situation. Got an ambiguous mark there from uh, playing around with this a little earlier. We know it's two down from the nose, so we're going to be here, going to be here, and we're going to be here. So the only weapon he can actually engage us with is going to be the Sierra mount with these two anti-fighter beams, which of course are painfully out of range. So that's the basic gist of mapping things to an arc. That that that's pretty simple, you know. That I I, I can work with that, right? I can. That, that's not bad. That's not bad. So let's make things a little bit complicated. Let's just say a turn went by. We're going to go ahead and move to our end of turn markers here. Let's say he's gone ahead and turned himself like that. I'm going to go ahead and put this here. We should be updating this as 1, 2, 3, 4, I believe this is speed. Yes, it's 4. 
uh, we go ahead and move to our turn marker. We have no vertical speed. But we're also going to say we did this like insane rotation here. So we're going to rotate this way. And we're going to go ahead and rotate like this. We're going to go up to 60 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and let go of it like that. And it's like, oh my, what have you done? So let's go ahead and update our turn marker, end of turn marker as well. We have a speed of 4. This would be mode 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll put it right there. We're actually going to have a heck of a close uh, pass right here at a distance of 20. <laughs> so anyway, um, wow, okay, how do we uh, work this out? So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and um, clean up all of our Avid and make sure the orientation to everything has been all set correctly. Go ahead and clean this all up real quickly. Go ahead and clean this all up real quickly. Spin over to this guy. I'll probably do hit this one first because this one's going to be a little bit simpler to work our way through. So let's go ahead and figure out his orientation. He's facing this direction. So his nose is going to be this way. Notice his speed doesn't change. Let's see here. His starboard side is going to be this way. His port side is going to be this way. His aft is going to be here. His top is going to be right here. So let's go ahead and update this one. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated to say the least. So uh, where do we even start with something like this? Let's see, we're facing off towards B. So we know that. Our nose is 60 degrees up. So this is going to be 0 degrees, 30, 60 degrees. Our nose is going to be right here. That means our aft is also going to have to come up too as well. So our aft is here, but it's actually below us. Let's see here. One of the nice things is our side, our port and our starboard, actually remain in exactly the same plane which is kind of convenient. The other one that gets a little complicated is where does our underside end up? Our underside, believe it or not, if you were to draw a straight line through, is directly underneath us. The underside would actually tip forward. So if you remember, our underside would normally be right here. But in this case, since we tipped our nose forward too, that's going to take our underside forward as well too. So one, two. So our underside is actually over here now. It's still underneath us. And that would also mean that our top is also going to shift one, two backwards, putting our top right here. This is going to be very important in just a minute, as you'll see. So, um, okay, let's uh, now shoot a bearing. So first thing we do is horizontal distance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine this time. Vertical distance is still 20. So it's going to be nine and 20. Oh boy, this is going to be like straight up. 9, we're going to go up to 20. That puts him at a distance of 21 away in the green arc. It's also going to be uh, 21 away in the green arc. So that's going to put him right... Ooh, switch to a tool that actually works. 21, he's above us in the green arc. Swing over to this guy. It's going to be minus 21. Okay, now it gets tricky. So if he wanted to take a shot at us, what weapons are valid? Remember, he's up here, we're down here. So we're expecting shots that are going to be kind of below us, which actually makes a lot of sense if you take a look at it. So let's see if we can map this. So there's a couple different ways we could do this. The first thing we note is if you go to the starboard side and you go down two, theoretically that creates a sort of odd situation where he could be in either one of these arcs. So let's try that first and see what happens. So here's our starboard side. We're going to go down to, oh, and there be the ambiguity. So because there's not as many squares down here, we have to pick one of these that makes more sense. So in this particular case, it's uh, which one is it going to be? Is it going to be the one that's slightly to the front, which is going to be something that's going to be this one right here? It's going to be something slightly to the back. So for now, I'm going to put the mark right here. Let's see if we can try it a different way. So if we take our nose marker right here, we can go ahead and measure it as well. So we're going to go down two from the nose. So one, two from the nose. So one, two from the nose, and then right one. Down two from the nose, ah, we were right the first time. So that means from the, his perspective, remember he's above us and this guy's below us, we're gonna be shooting down and slightly forward, which actually makes sense if you look at the chart. So let's go ahead and see if we can find where that would be on our actual weapons here. This is kind of unique. So we're gonna be, uh, let's see here. We're gonna go down one, two, over. Down one, two, over down one, two, okay. So that means Sierra and Tango mounts, all of these anti-fighter beams are not only in range, um, but they're also going, actually, are we in range? Uh, no, we're not in range because we're a little outside. Too bad. So um, we are in the correct arc to actually fire almost all of these weapons if only we had the action points for it. So now let's do the hard one. Okay. Oh my. So how do we work this out? I think my range is off a little bit. No, no, I'm correct. It's a range of 21. 
yeah, because remember how high we are vertically. Okay, so how do we solve this? Uh, this one's pretty easy. There's our nose. If we go one to the left of the nose, we're in arc. All right, find the nose, one to the left of the arc, done. That's it. You're probably looking at me like, no. Uh, think about it for a second here. We're basically, like I said, sitting here. He's up here. We're basically pointing at him. He's actually slightly to the left of our nose. And if you actually were to check it, we are slightly to the left of the nose. Okay, I don't believe you. Go ahead and try it a different way. Okie dokie. So let's go ahead and see what else we can try here. We know for a fact that he's sitting here. We know that uh, the top of our ship is going to be um, one. It's going to be coming down one from the top of our ship. And we know that once you've come down one from the top of the ship, you have to go. Uh, this is going to be, this is a little tricky. Basically, this would be the back of the ship and the top of the ship. We're going to come down one. That's going to put us in this arc. And then we're going to come forward one, two, three. But uh, remember the fact that it's going to be in that position because of where the nose is at this time. So is this in the right spot? One, two, one, two, one, two. Yes, and remember it's going to be vertical. So that's actually where he's going to be sitting, even though looking at the table, it's like, hi, isn't that kind of off to the side? It, it's just, it's kind of weird. And you're going to get stuff like this from time to time as well. You just have to kind of work it out. Always try to find your nose and sort of logic it out, something along those lines. And like I said, if this is the nose and you're moving one to the left, one to the left of the nose is going to put them right there. Sometimes you run into things that are a little, like I said, a little unintuitive, but it's all a matter of just drawing and kind of going. So now that we know where he is, let's see what arc we've got him in. We know that we can get him with our anti-fighter beams and our standard flak. Uh, none of these are going to be an arc, unfortunately. And of course, we could use both our M50 and our T50 torpedo systems because they're both going to be like that. So that basically concludes the shooting a bearing. Things get a little more interesting once you start flipping ships upside down. So for example, if we just want to quickly uh, demonstrate that, let's go ahead and flip him upside down. Grab him. Let's flip him completely upside down. There we go. That should be nice and complicated. OK, what if we had something that looked a little bit like this? Yeah, we'll make it even more complicated. There we go. OK. All right. Let's uh, see if we can work that one out. All right, start by drawing. So we're pointing at a hex edge. Oh boy, this one's going to be complicated. Now this is pretty easy because if you remember, our, normally our port is here. Our starboard is here now because we're upside down. So now we have our port. Our tail does not change. Now technically our base would be facing up and our bottom would now be below and we'd circle that if we could. So this is actually not a tough one at all. So fortunately for us, if you remember, he was 21 away in the uh, lower green arc a little while ago. Actually, let's confirm that real quick. Still 11 away and 20 high. 11 away, 20 high. Puts him at 22 away, my bad. So we know he's still in the same spot based on our tool. He's at minus 22. So if we were to go ahead and take a look now, we know that he's going to be two down from our port side. So if we go ahead and find the port side and measure two down, we'd run into this ambiguity again. But if you remember, we measured over from the nose, which is going to put us in, uh, let's see here. Actually, let's, let's confirm that with the nose real quickly. So we're going to be coming one, two, uh, two down from the nose and two over from the nose, two towards port on the nose. Two, two. Actually, that puts him right there. So this, again, is because of the shape of the things. It makes it a little bit different. But if you actually look, you can see that our port side is pretty much completely in line. So when you actually look at where he lands, you can see that it uh, favors that side. So as far as weapons we can employ in that direction, if we go two underneath that ring right here, that puts one here, that puts one here, and it takes us out of range, the front ring in the beginning. So this is actually a really advantageous place to be because we can engage him with every single weapon. Of course, at the end of the turn, you end up with something that's going to look like this. Taking my little example farther than we need to go here, but that's okay. I'd rather go ahead and uh, do a weird one. I'll go ahead and I'll reset this guy. And we can run into a situation that looks like this. Now, this is kind of cool, because the horizontal distance is 1, but the vertical distance is 20, which means, in this particular case, this is nice and easy, they're going to be 20 away, and that means that for this guy, he's going to be shooting straight up, which every single weapon can actually engage in, and this particular one is going to be shooting straight down, 
but unfortunately only these two uh, batteries can actually engage him. But again, because of the action points, he won't be able to do it. All right, hopefully that clarifies how to shoot a bearing. Uh, again, there's a lot to it. It takes a little bit of practice, and there's some great examples in the back of the book that kind of explain it, especially if you're, you're not clear. Generally, start with easy situations. Once you start rolling things and doing different pitches, yes, you get these crazy shots that you can take, but it's also going to add a little bit of overhead to the game. Enjoy.